buddy Kyle here with Spicer Designs. What? Welcome back to the channel. All right, today's video, we're gonna be covering a topic that gets brought to my attention quite a bit from viewers that watch the channel and from followers on our Instagram page. So a question that I get asked a lot, I have a lot of people struggling with the whole process as going from an idea in your head or a drawing to actually cutting it in the steel. So today, I'm going to go through the entire process. I'm not gonna skip through anything. Now, if you enjoy all the stupid shit that I do in a lot of my other videos, Idiot. This video is not gonna be like that. I will have obviously more of those videos coming, but I do wanna start fitting more of these informational videos in maybe during the weekdays for people that are seeking this information. I really have nothing else to say, so I guess it's time to get started. All right, now that we got Fusion 360 opened up, this first step is very important. We need to get our orientation of our sketch grid here set up just right. And you can see over here, this box has top, front, right. You can spin this thing all around. What we need to do here is get our X, Y, Z axis set up right for making this design. Now I am using a Langmuir Crossfire Pro CNC plasma table. I will have an affiliate link in the description along with promo code Spicer Designs, which will save you $100 at checkout. Now to get an idea of how we're gonna set up the orientation on our sketch grid, you can see here the torch head uh, going up and down. This is our Z axis, and then moving across this way is our X axis, and then straight forward and backward is our Y axis. So we need to make sure that we lay out that sketch grid on the X and Y plane, so it's as if we were cutting flat here on the plasma table. We don't want anything on that Z axis because we're not cutting anything vertically. So we're gonna to wanna to go in here and if you see the X axis here and the Y going up, we're gonna want the front selected and now we're on the correct plane. Now that we have the sketch grid all set up, we need to figure out what it is that we're going to draw on here. Now there's a couple different options. You might have an idea in your head that you wanna come up with from scratch. Maybe there's a part that you're making, whatever the case might be, I'm gonna show you an example that kind of covers everything. So we're gonna make this really easy, and what we're gonna do is make an easy button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on Google, and I'm gonna type in easy button, and then I'm gonna go to images, and we're gonna go ahead and just select an image. And that one's an easy one right here. We'll click it and save image. I'll save it as easy button, and I'll save it to my desktop, and then we can get out of here. Now we're gonna go back to Fusion 360 and we're going to go over to Insert, Canvas, and we're gonna insert from the computer. We're gonna to go to my desktop and there's the easy button. We're gonna open that up. And then now it wants us to select a plane to open up that canvas on. And we are already selected on the front. This is the plane that we want, so we're gonna go ahead and click it. And you can see if we zoom in, there's our easy button. I'm not worried about sizing this and scaling it yet. We're gonna go ahead and do that in a second. So we're gonna hit okay for right now. Now we're gonna go ahead and size this thing. I think I wanna make this easy button maybe six inches in diameter. So we're gonna click on the canvases tab. There's our easy button. We'll right click it, go to calibrate. And then we're gonna zoom in here and we're just gonna kind of click right on the edge of the circle and it's going to give us a calibration. So that is the actual dimension that it is now. You can see it's very small. We're gonna go ahead and turn that into six inches, hit enter, and you can see it blew that thing up pretty big. That's what she said. All right, now that we have our canvas and we have it all calibrated and sized the way we want it, now we're gonna use the CAD tools to basically create vector lines for this image. In order to do that, we're gonna to need to create a sketch. And again, it's gonna ask us what plane. We're already on the front side, so this is the right plane, the X and Y and now we can start using our sketch tools up here. Now there's a ton of sketch tools on Fusion 360. It's just something that you're gonna eventually learn more and more of over time. I'm definitely not an expert. I'm still learning on it every time I use it. You're always gonna have those basic tools that you kinda use all the time. So what we're gonna do is go up to the center circle tool, hit that center point, and then we're going to bring this thing out to the edge, and you can see we're right at six inches. Sometimes you're moving it around. It doesn't wanna quite get where you want it. So just hit the number that you want, type it in, and it'll go right to it. Okay, so we got our circle done. And this is a part that a lot of people don't know about, or they do it in a much more complicated way. What I'm gonna show you is the easiest way to do this. It can be on a straight line. It can be on a radius or a line that kind of curves a little bit. It doesn't matter. 
And what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the L, which gives us a line, or we can come up here and hit the line tool. And I'm going to make a line right across the bottom of the word easy. And I wanna make that line just about as wide as the word two, and you'll see why. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click this and hit X, which makes it a construction line because it's temporary. And it's kind of a reminder that it's temporary to me and that I need to erase it at some point. So now I'm gonna right click that line, go to text on path, and then here we can type in what we want on that line. And I'm gonna type in easy. So you can see that it already um, basically fits this thing perfect. Now, if I was to go in here and change some of these numbers around, you can see it'll shrink it down but that 1.6 was perfect. And then I also have the alignment. Uh, you can see that it kind of shifts it around. The reason why I made that just as wide as the word is so that I could hit the center alignment and it kind of fits it right in that circle right where we need it. Now we can go ahead and hit okay. And I'll go in here and delete that construction line by clicking on it and hitting delete. And you can see here that we're left with um, the, the font just typed out here, but now we need to turn this into actual vector lines that we can work with. So we're gonna right click on that, hit explode text, and you can see now we have some vector lines. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just click this and delete that, that constraint. We don't really need that anymore. And we also don't need our canvas anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and toggle the canvas off and makes it a little bit easier to work with. Now you'll notice that there's green lines and blue lines. What that is is the blue line means that I can still manipulate it and move it. And the green line means that it is fixed in that location. You cannot move it. You can delete it, but you cannot move it. So we really don't need that in this case. Uh, some situations you might, but we're gonna go up to this lock tool and we're going to highlight the whole image. And now it turned it all to blue. And if I do it again, it will turn everything to green. So now it's all fixed. So we'll go ahead and put it back to blue and hit the escape button to get out of that tool. Now, what we have here is we're going to click on the sketch and you can see that these little middle sections of the E and the A, they're not, quite, they're not highlighted, it's not recognizing them because it's kind of like a little island in there. We need to connect those center sections to the rest of this highlighted area. So what we're gonna do now is create some bridges. By doing that, I'm just gonna use the line tool and we're just gonna manually make some bridges. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these. Um, you can get the point. Now that we've done that, I'll hit escape to get away from that tool. We'll hit the trim tool and we're gonna trim out these sections that we don't need. I'll hit escape again and that gets us out of that tool selection. And now when I click on the image here, you can see that everything is connected now. It's all one piece. <laughs> the hell happened? All right, so that is it for our sketch. That was pretty easy. The next step I'm gonna show you is a little tip or trick that I have. Now this is something that I kind of figured out. I'm sure I'm not the first one to figure this out, but I've noticed that it makes the um, cut path process go way faster, way easier. And I'll show you what exactly this is gonna to do to save us some time in a second here. So what we're gonna do is highlight that. We're gonna hit Q or you're gonna use the extrude tool. And what we're gonna do is basically create some depth to this sketch. And I'm gonna do 0.1. So you'll see if I rotate this thing and zoom in, you can see that there's actually a thickness to our sketch now. It has now become a body. So now we're gonna go over to the design tab here and click on it and go to manufacture. And this is where we're gonna start the cut path process. The first thing I like to do is go over to here to units of measurement. And I like to turn it over to inches. That's just a preference because everything else that I scaled in this drawing was, was by inches. Now we're gonna to go to setup. And this section is pretty easy here. In the setup tab, we've got our machine, which we do not need to select right now. Our operation type, cutting, we didn't need to change anything there. Um, orientation is just how we have the model positioned on the grid. Um, we already kind of set that up by using the X and Y axes. And then our box point is the only thing that we really need to mess with. And right now it's in the center. And I want that in the bottom left corner. It makes it a little bit easier to position the torch head. That's generally where I put the box point. Over here, it's already selected the body that we're using, but if it did not, and it's looking for something, we're gonna go ahead and just click the body. And then we're gonna go over to stock now. 
And here I really don't mess with a whole lot of settings besides this um, stock offset mode. I'll click on that and do no additional stock. I don't like to have any excess over my cut line. I want it to be right on my cut lines, no additional stock. Now in the post process tab, we're gonna go ahead and name this file. We're gonna call it easy button. And then we can hit okay. Okay, so the setup part, pretty easy. Now we're gonna move on to the cut path and it is also pretty easy. So we'll go to the cutting tab and here we're gonna to need to select our tool. We'll hit select, we're gonna to go to library and I already have my razor cut 45 plasma cutter inputted into the tool library. Now if you don't have your plasma cutter set up in the tool library, I will leave a link in the description that takes you to Langmuir's website and there's a section there where it gives you a whole list of different videos explaining each one of those processes as far as getting the post processor set up or your plasma cutter set up in the tool library. We're not gonna cover that in this video. So I'll select the razor cut 45, hit select, and you can see here that it put my default cut settings in there. Now we're cutting this on 14 gauge mild steel and I typically like to keep it around 70 inches per minute. Now we're gonna go to the next tab, which is the geometry. This is where it benefits us to turn this into a body because all I have to do is click on that body and it already creates all of our cut lines and directions around each letter and the outside circumference of the circle. Now we're gonna to go to the heights, which there's nothing in here that I ever change. Go to passes. Uh, in here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that's in computer, not in control. I usually select a smoothing tab and that basically just kind of cleans up some of the curved edges and um, if there's a lot of individual lines that make a curve, it kind of cleans them up. And if you kind of hold your mouse on there, it'll show you exactly what it does, which is nice. Now we're gonna go over to the linking tab and this is where I make some changes. On my lead-in sweep angle, you can see right here just how you want your pierce to lead into your cut line. I like to do this at 90 degrees. And then our lead-in distance, you can see if I hold it there for a second, it will explain to you exactly what this is. I typically like to be as big as I can on these. I'm gonna go 0.15 on this. Now you might have to mess with this number a little bit in some of your different designs. Say I had a quarter inch hole right here for say mounting the sign. You might have to shrink this number a little bit because that lead in distance will start to get too close to your cut line and you don't want it to pierce near a cut line where it would kind of mar it. So this is a number that you might have to go back and mess with. What will also happen is once we um, hit OK and it creates the cut path, it may not accept all of the lines. When that happens, you can usually go back to this lead in distance, shrink that number a little bit and typically it will um, allow some of those smaller cuts to get recognized. The only other option that I mess with sometimes is this entry positions. And what you can do is you can manually select where you want it to start the cut on each cut. And you can see here, I'm kind of picking the locations where I want it to pierce and start that cut on the E and the A and the S and the Y. If you don't do this, it will automatically generate them and that's typically what I do, but there are some situations where I do uh, need to manually pick them. And you don't have to pick all of them. I could have just picked the A um, by itself if there was something specific on it that I wanted it to start at. But typically, you don't need to worry about that. So we're gonna hit okay. And you can see that it generated our cut path and kind of a cool feature, you can actually hit um, this simulate right here and hit play it'll actually show you the whole cut process as if it's cutting on your machine. So now that we have our cut path all done, actually if I zoom in, you can see where it's going to pierce and then it leads in that 0.15, makes the cut and then it leads back out to 0.15 and then it moves over to the next letter. So you see in some cases, if that was too long, it would actually start running into the other cut line over here. So I like to try to size them just right where it's piercing in the middle of an area that's gonna get cut out. Now we're gonna go over to the post process. And in here, this is where you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have your post process set up. The link that I'm gonna have in the description for Langmuir's website will also have videos showing you how to set up your post process. That's if you're using a Langmuir plasma table. Now we've got where we're gonna save this file. And then over here, we got some machine settings, my cut height, 0.05, spring back 0.02. My pierce delay I have a little bit higher than normal because sometimes the torch has trouble cutting through the mill scale on a hot rolled piece of mild steel. 
Uh, my pierce height, I have a little bit lower than normal. Um, I was tr having a little bit of an issue with a bevel on some of my cuts, so I lowered that to make it a little bit straighter. And then my retract height is one and a quarter. Now your retract height, I like to raise it a little bit higher because what happens sometimes is when you cut, say, a letter out and it lands on a slat, it might tip up. And then when that machine torch is moving around, it could actually hit that tipped up letter and it could drag the material and totally fuck your whole cut up. So I like to keep that a little bit higher so it moves up high enough to where it can move over any possible tip ups. So that's all we have here. We're gonna go ahead and hit post and you can see that the NC code successfully posted and now we can get out of Fusion 360 and we can open up Fire Control which communicates with the Langmuir Crossfire table. All right, now that we got Fire Control opened up on the computer, it actually doesn't uh, register anything right here. You can't do any of the functions until this is actually hooked up to the controller on the plasma table. So in order to do that, we just have to take this USB cable and plug it into the laptop. And once we do that, you'll see that fire control will now become activated and we can actually go through and start moving things around. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on this uh, import tab right here and we're gonna go to the easy button, which is in my 2023 folder. We're gonna select it, hit open, and you can see there is our easy button. And if you remember that origin that we set, that box point was in that bottom left corner. So that's where we wanna position our torch head. And once we get it positioned right there on the material, we can go ahead and hit zero all axes. And that is where our cut will start. Now you can see here that I have a piece of scrap steel sitting on the table. And I'm gonna basically just move the torch head over to the bottom left corner of that piece of steel just like we have it set up on fire control, and that's where that cut is gonna start. All right, now that we got that thing right in place in the bottom left corner of that piece of steel, we're gonna hit zero all axes. I'm gonna bring the Z axis back up, and then now if I move this thing across the table, all I have to do is hit go to work zero, and it's gonna go right back to that point right there where I hit zero all axes. Now, all it's left to do is to hit the start button. There it is, pretty f***ing easy if I don't say so myself. I hope this video was helpful to anybody that was seeking this information, having some issues getting through the process from start to finish. There's definitely a learning curve to this CNC work and um, all software is different, all CNC plasma tables are different. I personally like my Langmuir Crossfire Pro and I really like using Fusion 360. So if you like this video and you found it helpful, please hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this or some of the other stupid that I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. <laughs> I've got mail. Yes. I made a new friend. No? No, I didn't. Just more hate mail.